All right, hello everyone. So this is um, Haven Ditko, Second Life resident and creator and teacher, and I am here to show you how to make a shirt inside of Second Life or inside a blender for Second Life. Uh, a lot of people these days are really hung up on using Marvelous Designer, and that's great. I love the program. I even bought myself a um, uh, bought myself one of them, but still having Marvelous Designer is just another tool we have. We still have to bring it in Blender and do all kinds of things to it. And for those of you that don't have Marvelous Designer, you don't have to have it to make clothing. We've been making clothing inside of Blender for a very long time. So I'm going to show you just like a basic tank top inside of um, Blender today. I'll show you a few of the modifiers that you can use. I'll even show you how one of the modifiers works so that you can make different size mesh uh, clothing pieces as well. So the first part is going to be just on modeling the shirt and the second part will be about using the modifiers. Uh, this way I think you could just jump to the video that you need most. So inside of here I'm going to use a shift and C to center my cursor. Shift and A to add a mesh, or not mesh yet, um, an avastar. So we'll give that a minute to add in. Full of information, it takes a minute. Alright, so here's my avatar. And I'm going to right click on the rigging. So I have only that selected. I'm going to hit M on my keyboard and move it to another layer. And that's because I don't want to get rid of it. I still need it, but um, I want it out of my way as I create. I'm going to use Shift and A to add a mesh plane. And it's here on the floor. I'm going to rotate it to face me, so I'm going to use R, X, 9, 0 on the number pad, Enter key, and that rotates it by 90 degrees. And I'm just going to move it up. I'm going to move it up a little bit, maybe a little bit more than that. Okay. And I know that this is a big piece, but it's a simple plane that we first bring in. And I really don't resize it. Um, I use one of these for each thing that I do or start with because uh, you never know what you're going to create. So um, I'm going to go ahead and hit Tab key to put it in Edit Mode, W for Subdivide. And in the number of cuts in the panel, I'm going to click on the number one, and this allows me to enter a value that I want. So I've entered 75. Now, deselecting everything, I want to be able to cut out a shape here. But in order to see what I need to select better, I'm going to do two things. One, I'm going to make sure that I'm in Vertex Select. The second thing, I'm going to make sure that I turn off the Occlude. This allows me to see the avatar and the mesh at the same time. Using my B for border select, I'm going to select the portion uh, of the mesh that I need to in order to create the shape that I want. So here's some shoulder straps. And actually, I've done this video um, and uh, huh, I ended up turning my voice off for a phone call and not turning it back on. So this is a repeat if you happen to see that uh, video that was briefly up. And then I'll use B for border and select the actual shirt portion down here. And let me just go ahead and add one more edge loop up there. Okay, so that looks good. That looks like the shape of my shirt to start with. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'll hit Control plus I to invert my selection. And all of this will be deleted and you can see the piece that I will be left with. Um, this one here would be nice if it was a little bit lower, but well, actually, let me go ahead and now we'll just stick with what I've got for now. So with hitting Control I, I'm going to hit Delete and choose Vertices. And I'm left with this basic pattern piece. I'll probably have to resize it a little bit, but that's okay. 
Now I'm going to show you this two times, once now and once later. But do you see the actual origin down here? It's in the place that it was when the whole piece of mesh, the whole plane, actually existed. Because we can't move this origin in edit mode, it remains where it was until we move it. And we have to be in object mode to do that. So going on here and hitting uh, tab, for ob ta tab for object mode, I'm going to come into my tool shelf and into the tools tab and find the set origin and choose origin to geometry. And you'll see that it's popped up there and it's now centered in the absolute center of its own um, mesh that still exists. Hitting 3 on the number pad to go into side view, I'm going to take this and move it forward on the Y axis. Actually backwards on the Y, but to the front of her. I'll use Shift plus D and then choose the Y axis and I will move this back behind the avatar. Now we have this and it's, it's really good, but what uh, is hard to kind of tell is that this is the actual back. So this uh, side, when you bring it in Second Life, is going to be invisible. Let's go ahead and open up our Properties window or panel and slide down to the Mesh Display section. When you come here, do you see that it's not here right now? And that's because it only happens when it's actually in edit mode. So again, tab, edit mode, A to select all. And now in the mesh display section, we actually have it. We can find the normals. And in the normals section, click on the one with the highlighted face. This is going to show you the normals for that piece of uh, mesh. The normal comes out the front and not the back. So since it's coming out this side, that means this is the front and visible in Second Life. This is invisible. We need to switch this around. We could, if we wanted to, actually turn this piece of mesh around because these two pieces are very symmetrical. They're exactly alike either way. But what if you don't have something that's symmetrical? What if you have only one shoulder on your shirt? Well. If you come into the tool shelf again and go to the UV shading tab and choose in the normals uh, area flip direction, you'll see they all come out the back now. And that's exactly how we want them. This is a side we can see. We can now turn those normals off, hit N to close the properties panel, tab to go into object mode. I'm going to right click and select the front of my shirt. And now you're going to see that each of these pieces have their own um, own origin. When I use Control J to join these two pieces into one, which you can also do on the tool shelf with the join button, you'll see that I get just one origin up here in the front. So what I need to do is go back to the set origin and choose origin to geometry and now it's in the middle of my mesh. So back into front view, hitting tab to go into edit mode, I need to create the geometry that connects the front to the back. So what I'm going to do is use border select and select that edge, border select and this edge. And these edges have the exact same number of vertices and edges so they're going to work fine with a tool called Bridge Loop. So I can go into Control plus E to pull up my Edges menu. And from here I can go down to Bridge Edge Loops. And when I click it, look what happens. Pretty neat, huh? So now with that side done, I'll deselect everything. And I'm going to select the front of the shoulder or arm strap to the back, control E and bridge edge loops. I'll do this to the other side as well, control E and we'll do bridge loops, bridge edge loops. And again I can border select these two and something that's really nice is when your occlude is turned off 
you can work through your mesh. So if I did B and border select right here, you'll see that it selected the one directly behind it as well. Control E, bridge edge loops, and do you see what I did up here? I didn't unselect these uh, vertices or this geometry, so it included it in that bridge edge loops. So let me go ahead and deselect this, use Control E, and try that again. Now I've got some geometry there. I am going to want to at some point put some edge loops in here um, going vertically and that's just going to give me a better piece of mesh to work with. The shoulder I'm not going to do right away. I'll add those when and if I need to. But I will go ahead and add some down here on the sides. So going into side view, choosing control plus R gives me a pink line, a pink edge loop when I hover near an edge. So because I'm hovering a horizontal edge, I'm getting a vertical edge loop. If I were to hover near a, horizon or a vertical edge, I get a horizontal one. So hovering here and using my middle scroll wheel to create a number of edge loops, and you see as I scroll back and forth, I get more and less. I can left mouse click for the uh, blender to say, okay, that's how many you want. Let's confirm that. So I'll confirm it with my left mouse button. I can then right mouse click to center them into that area. You'll see that all of them are evenly spaced apart. I'm going to come to the other side and let me show you another little trick that we have. So if I use Control R to get my edge loop, let's say that I don't know and I don't can't count these so easily how many I have there. Do you see down here? It's telling me how many I have. And as I go up and down and with my scroll wheel, and also you can use your page up, page down button. Um, it's telling me how many I have. So I have nine of them, and that is what I created on the other side. So I'm going to left mouse click, right mouse click, and they are centered as well. If you do this and you realize, oh, I had ten on the other side or eight on the other side, you don't want to have to undo this you can simply come into the number of cuts operators panel here number of cuts and you can change that so until you go into another tool these options are still open to you okay so now what we have is a piece of mesh that is ready to be either box modeled or to um, have modifiers used with it to create your clothing I'm going to do a little bit of box modeling to end this video and then I will pick up it again using the modifiers from that point forward. So I'm going to go into side view with the number 3 on my number pad. I'm going to make sure everything is deselected. I'm going to use border select, so B, and draw a box with my left mouse button to select the top ones. And you'll see they were selected all the way through. I can now hit S and Y, and this will scale them on the Y axis only. See that? Now, you can also see that the back is traveling into the neck or above the shoulder, where this one hasn't reached the shoulder yet. All we have to do is just move that over a little bit, like that, and hit S and Y and scale some more. Now remember, these guys are going over the shoulder. They're not actually in the neck. So there we go. And now I've got both sides done perfectly. I didn't even have to use a mirror modifier. Mirror modifier is great, um, but not something that um, is logical for you to use every time. So I'm going to come down here and choose this again. I will hit S and Y to scale it down and pull it, S and Y, and this will actually go a lot quicker than, um, than it seems to be going at the beginning. I can even take these two here and lower them a little bit. There we go. 
All right, so I'm going to continue doing this all the way down the shirt. Uh, now, when I'm doing the ones that are outside the body, uh, it's easy to uh, see what you're doing. You know, you can see that mesh avatar, and it makes it easy to um, scale things down like this. So I'm going to move that forward, choose this one, and move it back. These ones are okay where they're at, so I only have to do the front here. A to deselect and B to border select. And now I'm at this point where I can't really see the outline of the body. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into wireframe. And you can do that by hitting the Z key on your keyboard. And as long as we stay inside you, we don't get too confused by what's going on and that again is because it's symmetrical oops so I'm gonna hit A to deselect everything and I will start working these edge loops now where I worked just the one side of these ones um, I'm not gonna want to do that um, here and that's because I want all of these to be scaled down evenly so I'm going to select all of these. Uh, let me do this one first. So I'm just going to move it over a tiny bit. Hit S and Y and scale it down. I don't need to do the next one at all. And I will move it over a tiny bit. Let's go ahead and I will do just this moving it over a tiny bit as well S and Y to scale that one alright now I'm going to select all of these and I'll use S and Y again whoops I hit my left mouse button too soon okay and this one you can see is good on both sides so I'll hit B and this time middle mouse button to deselect that one. I'll move these over. Hit S and Y to scale them down a bit. Builder select with the B, middle mouse to deselect that one. Again, move these over a little. S and Y and deselect the top edge. This one is actually not too bad either. So we'll just move it and deselect it. This one will scale on the Y. Pulling it back. B and deselect. Deselect the next one. And for these two, let's just move it back a little. We will deselect the top one. And we'll move the bottom one. So we made this kind of curve and match her going this way. Just so we can see what we got, I'll go back in object mode and out of wireframe. And huh, it looks very bad, but we're getting there. Don't worry, it's going to turn out a lot better than you can imagine. You can't even imagine how good this is going to look yet. So back into object mode. And again, using my wireframe. Take some just a moment sometimes to actually kind of um, acclimate yourself to what you're looking at. If that's the right word, I don't know. So this time I'm going to scale it on the x-axis. So S and X. Scale those down a little. And now I can deselect those actual three edge loops. S and X again. And now I can deselect the top one. See how fast this actually goes? It doesn't take that long. And it is a lot of fun. I like doing things like this. Creating something piece by piece. Sometimes just knowing what tools you have available to you. Um can make your modeling so much easier you don't have to guess at what to use you start to figure it out as you go alright so out of wireframe 
and there we go and we have a really great piece now uh, to start using on uh, with our modifiers so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go into my tool shelf and into the tools tab and look for shading and turn on smooth and you can see we're starting to get there but wait till we make this fit the body perfectly all right so that'll be the next video um, go ahead and take a little while get your um, your basic mesh piece set up and then we'll see you in the next one have fun